Next on the list, um, Jason Dill interview on GQ. I recommend you check it out. Maybe one of my favorite interviews of Jason Dill of yet. Um, as most of you would know or don't know, I'm a huge Jason Dill fan. Have been since, you know, the old school days when I used to kind of hang around at Slam City Skates. He was kind of my first kind of skateboarder crush. Someone I kind of looked up to and thought, you know what, I want to skate like him. Um, I want to push like Gino and I want to skate like um, Jason Dill. Just in general, just like a cool dude. And then, you know, he kind of went through his issues with time. With, oh, what the fuck? What, who did you skate for? Was it Time Machine? It wasn't Time Machine, was it? What was it? Why has it escaped me? What, what skate team did you leave? Ah. Oh. What did, what, what did he leave? I think someone, someone's shouting it out now, right now, listening to the podcast. What team was he on before? Antihero, not Antihero. What was it? Alien Workshop, right? Alien Workshop, right? Yeah, is it Alien? I'm pretty sure it was Alien Workshop. Was it Alien? Was it Alien? I'm pretty sure it was Alien. Alien. I'm pretty sure it was Alien Workshop, right? Yeah, anyway, anyway, much. anyway, it's a really good interview. I recommend you check it out. Um, it's a kind of it's it's good because it kind of really details um Jason Dill's re- Jason Jason Dill's relapses. I didn't know he had so many over the time because I know he was sober for a while and he was kind of putting out some of his best work. That's when he kind of formed uh fucking awesome where he kind of took it a bit more seriously and linked up with um AVE um or Jason Van Anglem or how even pronounce his name and they kind of decided to take um fucking awesome more seriously. They fleshed out the team. They got a team of absolute young killers there doing god's work the merch sorry the clothing is really cool the decks are really interesting and very much um different from things that you see from other brands out there and generally it's just like they just carry themselves in a really good way but i recommend you check it out because it's a really good article that kind of again details his battle with drugs and, and alcohol addiction especially considering the kind of friends that he's lost over the years um that have kind of been in his circle that have kind of you know gone up and down or kind of you know suffered off the hands of um you know alcohol and all that malarkey but yeah it's an interesting dude kind of kind of obsessive right like all the all the fucking um water san pellegrino water bottles that exist all over his um room incredible skate team there as per usual loads of kids there that are very influential kids have their own brands kids are just kind of transcending skateboarding for the most part and just generally a cool dude and something someone i've always kind of appreciated his kind of outlook on things and how he takes it you know and just the, the fact that he's not that the fact that um fucking awesome was never a thing that he kind of thought would become something full time right he'd always kind of done it as a side project he was kind of always a bit reluctant to kind of take it on and kind of carry it forward i remember i had the all over print fucking awesome hoodie back in the day the black and white one right and i remember even back then he was very reluctant to kind of make more stuff but then little by little i think he mentions about james james jebbia being the person who kind of really influenced him i think something like that right james jebbia where is it um uh yeah for years uh, yeah so i said let's read a bit here um it says here for and this article here for years deal explains fucking awesome would go in and out of dormancy i saw at one point uh if i even kept this up merely through the years it could stick around because i'd be tipped I'd be up and down on various drugs, being the fun version of myself I thought I could be, which, you know, we've all been in that place, right? Where you take drugs, you think you're the fun person that you think you could be, but actually you're the worst person you could be. Because usually the people that are fun, like me, who are hyper, like me, probably don't shouldn't be taking drugs because if anything it kind of maybe exasperates the issue and makes you more of like people already say i'm a lot as it is right now sober right so imagine when you had drugs and alcohol into it it's just like an, an entire bomb so sometimes it's actually good to actually chill out right stay off the drugs and alcohol and just enjoy yourself right um and the feedback was always intensely positive. Once he recalls, he was stopped while walking down Bowery by Supreme by final James Jebby. I had one of those really bad hangovers. It was the last person I wanted to see, of course. You know, it's always like that. And then when you're always fucked up, you always see someone you don't want to see. But he pulled up in his car and he's like, your stuff looks great. It's a breath of fresh air in the store. Thank you. And I was so fucking astounded. I think I went around the corner and threw up. <laughs> awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um... The, the the party became darker in 2009 dash no died of a report yeah that's one of his best friends as well heroin overdose and dill seemed dangerously close to similar faith that same year a steady diet of jameson's and percocet and viker did eventually caught up with him um there were times where it just was what you were supposed to do you're young and you have some dough you have you, um, you have no cares in the world says Pichelli. things escalated until all of a sudden dill was like wow i'm vomiting blood my esophagus is not connected to my stomach anymore i wonder how that happened <laughs> Man, it's fucking again. I'm only laughing because you know Dill's kind of a comedic character and all that sort of sense. But it's fucking dark, isn't it? It's dark how far, how d- deep, um, in the fucking dungeon, in the fucking mud that we have to get as human beings in order to kind of turn our lives around, right? We don't get even from even in my experience, right? You get slapped in the face a couple of times in life, and it you know 
it reminds you, hey, wake up, don't do that shit again. Hey, wake up, don't do that shit again. Yeah, life consistently slaps you in the face and tries to correct course for you. But sometimes human nature, or just the the nature of just being reckless, the nature of just being maybe it's a creative, is it a creative thing? Like impulsive, you just you know you don't think through your decisions. Where I wouldn't really say that. Yeah, maybe it is that. Maybe it's the impulsivity of it, right? You just you always kind of you know flying off the seat of your pants. And then um, when things happen uh, that are kind of catastrophic, you can sometimes be a bit surprised. Oh my God, I can't believe that happened. But then, you know, when you're honest with yourself and really look into the issue and see what happened, you're like, you know what? How could I be surprised, right? What else did I think would happen? But there's also this idea that you don't really listen to the little corrections of course. You don't really listen to the little slaps on top of the head. What you listen to is when somebody fucking sweeps you and takes you on the ground and you bang your head off the side of the concrete. That's when you kind of wake up. And by then, it might be too late, um, as as per as we've seen with other examples. But luckily for Jason, though, it wasn't. And his friends were there kind of supporting him. I mean, in Los Angeles, a new deal began to take shape. He moved in with AVE, who was a few steps ahead of Dill on the road to recovery, having hit rock bottom while drug addiction himself. It's it's kind of hard as well for these skaters too, isn't it, right? Imagine getting paid. Imagine being on salary to skateboard, right? It's a fucking bizarre profession because it's something that you don't necessarily deem to be a, a serious career, right? You don't necessarily... Some people deem it to be a sport, some people don't. But essentially, imagine being paid to skateboard very well, right? And you get paid to fly out places. You've got sponsors, you you know, you're on magazine covers, you've got your own little celebrity in the skate community. I'm not surprised most of these people... Um, fall into the addiction especially when it comes to um, alcohol and drugs just just too much t- temptation there right and partly skate culture in some way shape or form maybe does you know maybe not promote but it does maybe glorify it does maybe um, you know it's part and parcel of the scene to kind of be a bit of a reckless cannon or you know a bit of a wreckhead in that regard and maybe not even um, actual wreckhead through drugs and alcohol but just to take risk right jumping uh, jumping um, I don't know dropping in from a, a you know obscene heights or d- trying a particular trick that might you know end up you breaking your fucking femur there are things that you do in skateboarding that kind of you know would lend themselves very well to kind of alcohol and drugs they imagine being young they imagine having like countless amounts of money or money that you've maybe never seen in your life before i can see why they get involved in that and it's really f- interesting that most of the big people especially the you know the senior pros who have kind of you know still maintain a very kind of high profile and have got you know have had a long career for the most part, are completely sober. They just can't, you just can't do the both. You can't do both. Especially if you're trying to operate at a high level. Especially if you're actually taking it seriously and you want to get better and you're, you know, you're doing yoga, you're meditating, you're doing mobility exercises. The last thing you can be doing is, you know, drinking whiskey on a, on a fucking Tuesday morning, right? And, and taking a couple of lines. You can't do that. It's just not going to be settled for you. So it's, so it's just interesting to see how these things have gone. They traded in their crack pipes for protein shakes, which is fucking a mad line, isn't it? And started on a comeback that would ultimately lead to Dill landing a, a second fresh recover in 2019. 2011, sorry, in AVE when it's covered his skateboard in the year 2015. When Dill quit Alien Workshop and took AVE with him in 2013, it was a big news in skateboard and that was a bit second becoming, second beginning of fucking awesome. I didn't want to trust Dill. I didn't want to. I didn't want. I didn't want to rust. Says Dill. So how do you avoid rusting? You keep moving. So I had to leave. The owner of the workshop. He was like my dad. So it felt like I had to move out of my dad's house. It was emotional. It was gnarly. Yeah, I remember on the forums. Man. Big big news there. But like I said, I want to avoid rusting. I think that's what P Diddy said once about his name changes. Right? He said like these name changes are basically his effort to kind of you know maintain relevancy. To kind of keep himself fresh and to kind of give him. Because again, every name is a different kind of persona for P Diddy. Right? He kind of fully adopts it when he's like the love guy, when he's like Diddy, when he's like P Diddy, when he's like Sean Puffy Combs. Like everything encapsulates, encapsulates basically a, a certain, a certain character. I'm not even sure if, if looking back at it, if he has different haircuts. Maybe he does have different haircuts. But I like how every kind of name is like part of a different personality. And I guess for the same reason, you know, that deals mentioning this thing. You just, you know, in order to kind of keep reinventing, you have to keep yourself moving, keep yourself fresh, absorb yourself to new environments. But, you know, in some cases, when you do that, people around you are like, oh, you sold out. Oh, let the people behind, let people behind you kind of were there for you and they need to be. And I remember that time on the forum, especially when I, used to, when I used to go on sidewalk, skate forum and slap back in the day. I remember that being a big, big thing within the community. People were really pissed off that he kind of decided to leave um, Alien, especially in the way that he did. Blah, 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 blah. But anything seemed quite well. Um, it, um, fucking awesome is where it should be and he's doing the lord's work with this amazing little skate team that he's got underneath his belt